Good afternoon. Um, my name is Jim Kalaki. I'm here on behalf of the Furl Group to, again, thank you for coming. I hope you have a great time. I can almost guarantee that you will have a great time. And if you really like it, um, then you can watch the video uh, of this session, which Brian assures me will be up by tomorrow or the next day or sometime soon. And um, we'll, that will give you a chance to catch up on what you may have missed or what you want to hear again. Um, Tom Sears is our main presenter today. Tom is a resident here. He's a retired um, orthodontist. <laughs> and, and anyone who lives in Greensboro and has children that are, um, I gather, between probably 20 and 60, um, they or their family know Tom. And um, I just came from my dentist this morning, and he knows Tom and sends his best wishes and so on. Um, well, in addition to being a very well-known um, dental professional, Tom um, has written, and I'm just going to read this because it's, it's just beautifully done. Um, his non-dental relaxation included serious study of early American history, furniture, and architecture. In January of 77, he removed four originally original fancy painted rooms and mantles from the 1815 General Francis K. Simpson House in Northeast Guilford County, and in coordination with an architect and engineers, copied and built the main portion of the 1819 John Vogler House from Old Salem. Um, he also has copied the market firehouse in Old Salem for his garage, his former garage. I don't believe that's in River Landing. <laughs> and, um, and the Dr. Verling Wash Bakehouse for a utility building. Almost all the doors and cabinets were hung with antique uh, iron hardware. And the house was gradually furnished with furniture and decorative arts from the same period. Um, the one other thing I would mention, um, as uh, Charlie and Sally are here, there they are in the back row, um, they, as you know, have been a part of this series both this time and in last semester. And thanks again to them and Tom to you for introducing them to us. I think we've all been blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would. Uh, I won't do this today, in honor of Sarah. She. She's at Pebble Beach and not doing well. But I want to do it in honor of her, because she's the one that, I took her to an auction uh, a few months after I finished my residency up in Ashe County, which is where we started out together in 1940. And we started the first grade together in 1946. And I took her to an auction and, and uh, she, uh, she had never been in an auction before, and I'd been to agricultural auctions with my daddy, and so she, I explained to her, you know, I said, Sarah, you don't raise your hand or scratch your face or something if you're not wanting to bid. And uh, so we get along in the auction, and the auction was from the Ray family, which is one of the most uh, important families in northeastern, northwestern North Carolina from the early 19th century, it turns out. So... We, uh, this uh, pie safe comes up for sale that's kind of moldy and whatever, and she raises a hand, and I'm saying, Sarah, Sarah, you know? And uh, anyhow, bottom line is we, 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 we buy it. And, and uh, the bottom line is that we still own it, and it's in the basement of our house in Old Salem. And also we found out from research that 
a gentleman named, named George Washington Ray built it, that he built it around 1845, that there's a house in West Je uh, right outside of West Jefferson that was a wonderful B&B &B at this point that we've stayed in that uh, he built in 1850, um, 51 when he got married, before he got married. And so it's, uh, uh, we've kind of tied things and put it together from that. So all this th that we did uh, is her fault because she got me in trouble. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, it's, 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 I'm told it's been downhill ever since. Uh, I, also, I'd like to, Sally and Charlie, uh, uh, Charlie's the one who got me in trouble with this Lindsay Plantation stuff, and so, uh, uh, what, three or four years ago, I guess. So, and I've known Sally for a long, long time, and um, um, it's, um, um, Sarah, Sarah is, Sarah's one of those individuals that, that has always um, never put herself first on anything she's ever done, which is, which is incredible. I'm not that nice. Um, and Sally is very similar to that, and, and I want to compliment Sally because I, this is partly for y'all's honor, too. Thank you. And, my, my best friend is also here, Gene Purdom, whom my Appalachian Trail buddy. And I've never seen him put anybody, he always puts other people first too, so I'm, I've, I've been trying to hang around them so I can try to be a better person, so thank you. <laughs> this is a house that we put together in Greensboro that we closed the sale, ironically, we closed the sale on it one year ago today. Uh, we started on it, plant, drawing plans in uh, uh, 1976. Uh, and so, I'll, as we go along, I was told by Bill, Bill Moore, who was head of the Greensboro History Museum at that point, that there, there was this uh, house out in the northeast corner, very opposite end of the county from here, of Gifford County that had this incredible fancy painted interior in it that had been vacant for then 30 years. Uh, and so, I, so, uh, so we decided we would, might be interested in that because so, we'd been, because I took Sarah to that auction and got in trouble, so then it kind of, you know, like a little crack cocaine, you just kind of keep going. So it just kind of got worse and worse as we went along. But, but this is a house, incidentally, the boxwoods that are here, uh, uh, were smaller when we put them in, uh, but they, they were boxwoods that I treated two boys. It turns out their daddy was in landscape business, and so he was helping us with landscaping uh, a couple years after we built the house. And it turns out that his mother had some English boxwoods that she had rooted 45 years previous to that, and so she offered me every other one if I would take them out. So we, we dug ditches and drains and all this stuff, and because if you don't drain boxwoods in red clay, they, don't want, they won't live. So these boxwoods, which interesting, the boxwood blight, just as I sat in the house last year, the boxwood blight took them out. And, and the boxwood blight incidentally came from England, and it's the worst in North Carolina, Virginia, and Connecticut. And it's, we, we did every trick we knew how to do, but uh, they are, those boxwoods, at, uh, at the point we sold the house, uh, were somewhere around 80 years old. And so I, and I personally pruned them every year by myself individually. So, you know, I, things like that kept me off the streets and keep me from getting in trouble. This is a piece that is a desk and bookcase that uh, my daddy bought in 1937 at uh, the family sale. Uh, our family has a, a very complicated history of, uh, because of uh, injured my granddaddy. Uh, but this desk, in bookcase, Daddy bought and paid $75 for in 1937 at a family sale. Uh, it didn't have these braces on it. I put those back in the original holes and, and copies that had some wooden knobs. But in the top, the top of it is the books of my, my paternal great-granddaddy, Thomas Meredith Mason. I'm a Mason and a Sears. And, and uh, he was uh, quite a 
obviously an educated man, and our, our family lived just below Chapel Hill, and the land that should be mine right now is under Lake Jordan, and that's another story. But uh, uh, condemned in 1971. But anyhow, these are very scholarly books. In studying them, I saw St. John's College written in the books. I did research. St. John's College was a school that was in Oxford, North Carolina. It was put in, built around uh, the buildings, initial buildings around eight, uh, 1855. It operated from then until the, right early in the Civil War and shut down. And so it had a short lifespan, but I saw St. John's College scribbling some. Uh, it became the Masonic Orphanage, if any of y'all are Masons, uh, and is a, an important orphanage to this day, and the oldest buildings at the Masonic Orphanage are part of what was originally St. John's College. And so, but incidentally, I found from studying after my daddy died, who died 27 years ago next month, I know that the maker was Thomas Sherrick. I know it was made in Bertie County. I know it was made between 1780 and 1785. Uh, and it's intact, original feet, the whole bit, and Daddy would be so thrilled to know that, that I've learned these types of things. There's almost identical desk bottom at Historic Halifax Museum right now, and, uh, and my fifth great-granddaddy uh, uh, brought it from Bertie County to Chatham County, which is, again, Chapel Hill, in 1797. So these are things that I found out. And this is Bertie County, which is just over west of Edenton, if you're into uh, the coastal part. And we moved over to the edge of just below Chapel Hill. And so we've got, uh, uh, my distant relatives, a major part of the land on the UNC campus is, uh, came from my distant relatives, and I'm ironically the only Sears who's got two degrees from Chapel Hill. Uh, most of them went to North Carolina State. Cause, but, uh, but anyhow, that's uh, interesting as we start to put this together, that's crazy. When I was in residency at Chapel Hill, uh, Sarah picked up the Southern Antiques book which in a bookstore, used, used a book in a bookstore in Chapel Hill. And this is, was the preeminent uh, writing on Southern Antiques circa early th 1930s. And so I've accused her also of getting us in trouble by getting that because it just, you know, made it, made it worse. Uh, <laughs> we got more trouble. Uh, in 1973, um, we, um, we had become friends with a gentleman, Dr. Lawrence Osball, who now deceased, who had copied uh, the Lightfoot House in Williamsburg, if you're familiar with Williamsburg houses. And, uh, he had uh, become a, a friend and he was a serious collector and so he got us in more trouble. And so he had suggested that we go over to Mazda for, for a presentation that was original presentation including this booklet on the Swiss School of Cabinet Making. And so we did that in 1973. Uh, Sally, you were not there then. But, uh, and, and Sally is Sally's now retired from Mazda and uh, is quite the scholar and was in charge of the educational part and after we retired Sarah and I have audited uh, 10 graduate courses through UNCG and UVA of which Sally was the leader of a lot of them so she's helped get me in a lot of trouble also. But uh, this is the Swiskid Cool which is R Davidson County and we now own five important pieces with three signatures out of this school of cabinet making so it's Again, it's kind of like crack cocaine. It just kind of gets bad. Uh, this is our house. Uh, we were told where we built our house in Greensboro, which is in Irvin Park, uh, that uh, this was a Native American site. And so this is an arrowhead that I dug up. Uh, and it's a Kirk serrated arrowhead. I'm out of my league here, so y'all experts. Can, but uh, supposedly five to 7,000 years old, and it was dug up. Uh, when we were working on this, but I created this sign by copying a, a, a tavern sign from Connecticut, and I named it Crow Hill because the crows stayed at that ha around our house all the time, and so I designed and built this sign, and this, uh, that's our, us two crows. So that, is, that was how we came to Crow Hill. This is uh, uh, a map showing if you can see right here, there's Brooks Bank Road, 
and it used to be called Watlington Road when we, when we did it, but the house that we took the interior out of is right in there, and this is the Hall River that, that eventually comes way on down and becomes, goes into Cape Fear. Uh, and the, the High Rock Road is this road right here, and so uh, the owner of the house, uh, Sampson, Francis Sampson, went from the house that he built in 1815 when he got married uh, on the December 16th, 1815, and then later in 1848 and moved in 1850, they moved up on High Rock Road, and I'm gonna show you that too. But so all the happenings are right here. What Charlie was talking about with all the uh, land, Sourtown land and project is a uh, Virginia Lines right up here. And so you talk about the Sourtown and exactly the lines Charlie would, is the expert there. But, but this is all right in this same area, and so this is, this is where we were. Um, so to give you a context of where we are. Um, we were, Bill Moore, as I told you, told us about the house. We went out in the summer of 1976. Uh, this is a picture I took that day before we went in. Uh, this was a federal house, a very simple federal house, and outside looks very, not too complicated. It had a little interesting trim up around the chimneys that had a date on it, uh, and had been vacant 31 years. The last, uh, unmarried uh, family member had uh, died in 1945. And so, uh, so this is how I saw it. So we carefully walked and hid it in the door uh, to look at it. And uh, so as we hid it in, and this is the Simpsons. And the, these two uh, are Gifford Limners that Sally talked about and did a beautiful presentation back in the fall. And two of the uh, Gilford Lemons that Sarah and I own are the two that I've got up here of the Gillespies from Greensboro. And so these two are in Hawaii, and Sally and I chased them down to Hawaii. Uh, went from Piedmont, North Carolina to upstate New York to Hawaii. Uh, the gentleman is now in his 90s. Uh, we got these, he managed, he took pictures of them in 19, uh, 2000, late 2014, and because uh, uh, I did a presentation in Williamsburg in 2015, uh, and these I've, I've all, I offered to if he would have an expert uh, to take them out of the frame and digitally reproduce them and whatever, and he's not been willing to do it. So, but luckily we have these. But these were two very important people. Uh, that were the owners of the house that we're talking about, or two houses we're gonna talk about. And uh, they married in uh, December of 1815, and as I've explained to people, uh, you know, if you got married back then, you lived in the country, you didn't just uh, get married and then get, have an apartment, and then you built a house if you were of a person of means. You built it before you moved, before you got married. So this, I'm sure the house is 1815. But they, these were uh, Gifford Lemons, and the interior, if you look at the interior part, uh-oh, wrong button, but I'm gonna go back just a minute. Uh, if you look at the interior, and you look at this red and the blue, this is a wainscoting, and so then we're gonna go to this, because this is a view of the, of the parlor in that house. So that, we think that, that, that those pictures were done in the parlor. Okay, and so this is a view of what we saw. House again had been vacant 31 years, but when I walked in the house in July, uh, the whole wall started humming. And uh, Labor Day of 1970, when I just recently finished my residency, uh, I went to my, farm, my parents' house, which is not that far from here, maybe 10 miles, in eastern Guilford County, and I opened a barn door and six wasps stung me around the head and neck, and, this is before EMS, and we barely got to Cone Hospital in Fadrinland before I would, I'd have been out of here. Uh, I actually had to ask Sarah to drive faster. Uh, I had not, I knew I was stung, and I said, Sarah, we need to go to the hospital. And uh, she, uh, I, didn't, I didn't scare her enough, and so then I had to ask her to drive faster because I was getting in trouble. Uh, I could have been gone. But anyhow, this is the interior that is what we saw. So we said, okay. We, we're interested in doing something with it. Uh, incidentally, this is a stairway. All right, this stairway comes down from the second floor, 
which had painted interior up top, comes down and you walk into a wall and you either come off this side or go into the dining room, and, which is a business office. So somebody didn't, didn't take all the classes in architecture somewhere along the way. <laughs> and some, somebody went to sleep. But I mean, it's, it's incredible interior and all this stuff. And you know, then you walk down the steps and it's like, okay. So you go one way or the other. So I, I just have always been amazed with that. Okay, in the meantime, we had been hanging around Old Salem and Mess and so forth, so I became very fascinated with the Moravians and what they did and their order of things, and I've told people now I'm half Moravian, half Baptist, and so anyhow, I've been, uh, and so we, John Vogler is one of my heroes, and he was a, an incredibly skilled gentleman who was a, a, a gun maker, a silversmith, uh, did everything. And so he built this house uh, for his bride in 1819 in, in Old Salem. And, and so, but we were in, in uh, I just finished taking an eight hour written exam for my College American Board exams in Philadelphia. Came back home and we said we're gonna take a and schedule a vacation, so we headed to New England. Uh, we had hoped to have, be parents and weren't able to, so uh, our vacations became museum study trips. And, and so we find this document, monograph series, which was, these monographs were done during the Depression, funded by the White Pine Society to help keep architects busy. Y'all probably know that. If you didn't, you've learned something. And so uh, this was done, so these were done, and there are ones on the Boston Post Road, uh, all, most of them are in, in north, of, north of here, but, but Old Salem had a feature. And we were in a shop, an antique shop, Iggy Weiss in Southbury, Connecticut, out outside of Southbury. And I, I opened up, and he's got these in his shop. And I said, somebody's trying to tell me something. So, so we buy the monographs and come home, and we said, okay, we're going to put that interior that I showed you, which is 1815, we're going to put these two together. And so, we came back in January of 1977, because it was, well, temperature was 17 degrees and snow. One of the, I did three three-day weekends, and I carefully took the interior out. I didn't have to worry about the bees, and when I incidentally opened up the wall in the parlor, the whole wall was honeycomb. So if, if I had gotten in trouble, I would not be talking to you now. So, so it was pretty amazing. But this was January 1977, and so we came in. One chimney had been taken down in the meantime by one of the, the guy that uh, owned it, uh, owned the property, uh, took one, had taken, a, his son had taken a chimney down to make a fireplace in his own house. So that's why, if a little details, if you pay attention, one chimney is missing. Uh, so anyhow, this is another view of it. It is, you know, it's a very, important house in the middle of nowhere. Uh, Simpson owned, uh, in 1840, he owned uh, 24 slaves and nine other people occupied in, architect in, in agriculture. Uh, he was a very large farmer. He also was in the North Carolina legislature. Uh, he was a, uh, a lieutenant in the North Carolina militia of circa 1814. He later became a major general in the North Carolina militia. So very important person. Uh, another view of it again, you can see it was just, and the back part was addition built on later that was a later date because the, uh, the original kitchen would have been a separate kitchen because kitchens were built separate for fire reasons. You don't want to burn your house down. I'm sure you know that, but if you didn't, I'm just telling you. Uh, here's the upstairs master bedroom section, which is now our master, was, was our master bedroom section. And this is the side where the chimney's out, but you know, I saw this interior and you know, if you're crazy and I am, then it, then it got me uh, hooked. The mantle they had taken down, taken off and set very nicely over, over to the wall. That's exactly how it was when we walked upstairs. Uh, those are dirt dauber nests and so forth. And so all the interior later was cleaned. I used dental instruments, but not once from my office. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I knew you'd be asking. Uh, 
I, I use dental instruments and Q-tips and some liquid ivory and a little bit of, of full of steel wool. And we also had some powder <coughs> post beetles, so I had to treat it with chloridine, which was legal then, not legal now. Uh, now you'd have to gas them. Uh, but anyhow, so, so you'll see later, but that's how it looked when I first walked up there. Uh, actually, as a trivia bit, I, I agreed to, I, I made a deal with the guy and I said, well, I'll pay you $800 for three rooms. There were four rooms there. I said, I'll pay you $800 a room for three rooms and I'll take all four out and I'll deliver one room to the Greensboro Museum in your, in your honor. And, and so it's, if you go to Greensboro History Museum, there's one room that's mounted that I'll show you a picture of later. This is my transportation crew. Uh, this is my daddy, who at the time was 71. I just uh, figured that out when I was thinking back. And this is my little bride, Sarah, who unfortunately is not doing well at this point. But she had that cute little smile that she always had. That, that's what hooked me and got me in trouble in the third grade. Uh, and I've been in trouble ever since. So, uh, but Samson later moved, just to give you a bit, he later, in 1848, bought this house which is right up where I showed you the second place I showed you up on the map, just up in the edge of the county. And this was built by Joseph McCain, who was John McCain's, Charlie and I think he was, it was John McCain's fourth great granddaddy. Okay? So just to tie a little more history together. And he died actually in 1830, and his wife and, and some of the relatives had previously gone to Mississippi, and so they moved to Mississippi because a lot of, plantation people as land got depleted, they went down Mississippi and out that, out that way where they could do big time farming. This is an incredible house. And it was restored uh, first in 1940 by uh, Tempe Prince, who's a lady that's deceased that had a bad addiction to uh, restoring houses, and, which I understand. Uh, and uh, she also did some restoration work in, in Old Salem as a bit of trivia. Uh, but this house is an incredible house that, that uh, has again been restored. And I took this picture in 2007. And uh, as a bit of trivia, this porch on the right hand side uh, goes into uh, uh, what was a, probably a dining room. Uh, people used to be, when you died, were laid out in the dining room. Some of you may know that. I've known some people that said they had no clue, never heard of it. And so you always, the Simpson house had a side door, uh, not fancy like this, but, but so you can move things in and out. So that was in there. And it's, uh, it's, I've been in the house twice, I guess. Long, I'd love to go back now, right now. But, it's, uh, it's a, but it was an incredible house that he moved in. And Simpson's wife died in, uh, right at the end of the Civil War, 1865, and he died in 1873. Uh, this is a mound that came out of the parlor, the downstairs main building. Again, dirt dogger's nest, etc. And so, just to give you some ideas, this is a room that's mounted in the Greensboro History Museum, which was one of the upstairs bedrooms. So, uh, I had to decide which rooms I was going, which one I was going to keep, which one I was going to deliver. Uh, so it's uh, part of the decision process. This is a close-up of one of the mantles. And it's incredible if you're into woodworking and stuff because all this wood that was put in here in different patterns was boards that were, were planed out in grooves and then cut and fitted together in pieces and then the painting. And so itinerant painters would come around and stay with you and then do all this painting. So this, this would have been in 1815, just unbelievable, unbelievable uh, blowout. Uh, but this is how I cleaned it up very carefully. Uh, you don't do careless work, so that's where dental instruments and little dental skills come in handy sometimes. So, uh, also we, we of course worked with architect and engineers because we had to engineer the whole thing and do all this and we put a concrete shingle roof on the house which uh, was very, very heavy so we had to engineer all the steel and all that stuff to go with it. Uh, so. And this, we also wanted to get it right, so this is the Vogler House in Old Salem the, in the background. But we went to uh, uh, Old Carolina Brick in Salisbury, who does handmade brick, and we 
got some brick samples and then we decided our color of brick and then we had a, we bought tinted mortar so the mortar was tinted to, so it looked older so so it just you know it's kind of not too many things left out this is a gentleman that was extremely important in my life who was a builder and I met him through Dr. Allspaugh who uh, was a friend of ours and Gene Purdom, my best friend, uh, I met through Dr. Allspaugh. So I can thank uh, Dr. Allspaugh, now deceased, who, who was a dentist and a, uh, a very scholar, uh, and a scholar. Uh, but DC uh, was a builder from Burlington who is the most modest guy in the world. De Gene can laugh and uh, we have things about him. He had this funny sense of humor. Uh, he went in World War II at 19, was a gunner on a B-24. On his 25th mission, he said he knew that he was not coming back. They got shot down. Uh, he, uh, and one day, uh, one day after I'd been around him for maybe a year, I said, DC, you amaze me because you are so exacting in what you do, but you have a light side to you that I'm not, most, dentists and physicians I'm around, uh, we don't have a, a light side sometimes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I said, you amaze me at the detail that you're willing to go to, but you've got this light side. And he said, Tom, he said, I'm on my, I don't remember if he said third or fourth life. And he said, uh, we got, uh, plane got shot down. He said, we landed in Bavaria and spread out across, a, a, you know, as they've been bailing out. Uh, he said, luckily I got picked up by a German soldier instead of a farmer because he said if a farmer had picked me up, he'd have put a pitchfork in me. So he said, that was my first luck. He said, we uh, got all assembled together when they got us all together. He said, the, 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 the pilot the cat that was in charge of the plane, who was uh, obviously, I, he had talked about him before to me, was 21 years old, you know, but he was, had a year of college or something. Anyhow, the pilot was one of his heroes. They'd been told to never carry German money in their coat. The guy had German money in his coat. They pulled him out of the line and shot him right then. So he said, I figured they would shoot me, and they didn't. So he was in POW camp five months, luckily not in Japan, a Japanese, if you keep up with that. And so he said, I'm just lucky to be here. So DC is this incredible guy that I've learned so much from and, uh, and very much has been a big part of my life. These are flitch beams of your engineers in the crowd. Uh, when you're building one and hanging a big roof on it and all this, uh, the headers over the windows and these, all these beams are flitch beams, which is a piece of steel with two tube of 12s bolted on either side of it. This is before lamb beams, which are laminated beams, which are out now. They weren't out in 1977. So we've got tons of flitch beams everywhere. And they are some kind of heavy. Uh, this is DC with Roger Harville, who was a friend of mine, uh, who's one year younger than I am, who incidentally is blind, basically blind at this point, who he and his daddy before him did all the incredible mill work. If anybody's ever heard of Otto Zanke in Greensboro, very famous interior designer. He, his daddy, uh, was, and they, were, they did Zanke's any kind of interior work they ever needed. They're just immensely talented. And Roger, so Roger and DC were very important parts of our life. Uh, this board that you see right there is one of the original boards, original paint out of the Simpson house. And I put it here on the side of the steps and, and very, we saved, you know, original paint. Uh, but anyhow, you can see this, but Sarah, uh, made sure, this is birthday cake. <laughs> we had, Sarah made sure that everybody was properly taken care of with birthdays and things like that. So she was down there every day helping with it, uh, or most every day, but that's birthday cake, happened to be celebrating that day. So, so you, you have to have a little incentives, you know, to make the work go. Uh, this is one of the original doors out of the house. It's an incredible paint job, it's just incredible. And then there were a couple other doors that were not in great shape, so we took the panels out and we built the kitchen cabinets around those panels. And the, and the, the hinges are, were custom made by a friend of mine that now lives in Maine who owned the Stephen Tabor windjammer, if you happen to be in Maine windjammers. Uh, and uh, 
but he built those. Uh, he was a professor at UNCD at the time. But this is all the house has all old hinges in it. In hindsight, I shouldn't have put these hinges right here. It was a little bit of a rational exuberance. Uh, but I, they are Moravian rat tail uh, hinges, and they just kind of not rat tail, but um, I think I'm in. anyhow. Uh, but but I, I got a little carried away. But but all the all the hardware is, is old hardware. So this is a door to our pantry and a kitchen, and these are some of the kitchen cabinets. Uh, this is Moravian hinges, classic Moravian hinges, and so that was fun to do that. And the, all the doors were uh, extra thick mahogany because uh, we got a we got approval from from Duke Power that if we could, didn't have to my sister excuse me uh, uh, that we would not have to use storm doors and storm windows because that doesn't fit on the period house. So these are all mahogany doors, and but I came up with the idea that. Most doors, if you pay attention to them, sometimes they'll split because of the difference in temperature inside outside. So these were two and a quarter inch doors, but there were two panels, and, and so that each panel is floating separately with the, with tar paper in between, so that the panels would so that we and uh, this is trivia, but anyhow, so these doors weighed 250 pounds a piece, I guess. So we had to build solid wood around it, but. I was priming it one day, and obviously I did a little Valentine for Sarah. So, you know, this is how this is how I wasted my spare time. Uh, the the people that are important in this part of this process. This is John Bugman's wife Christina, who built the house in Old Salem, who lived to be 97, who was such an incredible person, gunsmith, silversmith, etc. And this is uh, the the Simpsons, and then this is the. Daniel and Margaret Gillespie, whose original Gifford Limners over here, that were a very, very important part of Greensboro. He was also involved in the battle of uh, the regulators of Alamance in uh, uh, May of 1771. He was also involved in the Battle of Gifford Courthouse, which is the most important single battle in the southern part of the United States from the Revolutionary War in uh, March 15th or 16th. Uh, Ten years later, 1781. So, uh, so he was and died three years after this was done. Died in 1829. But these are the people that are important. This is the front entrance of our house. Uh, the stoop. If you go into Old Salem's, the stoop that hangs out. And so we had to run flitch beams into the middle of the house to carry it away to the stoop. I had it wired so we could hang Moravian star, all that. Uh, we pre-planned that, so that was our entrance way that. We no longer have. This is the entrance, and so we just we. That's how you walk in. The floors were uh, were cut from some 90-year-old beams that had been taken from a disassembled warehouse in Durham, and so we had them sawed up and cut to uh, five and a half and seven half inch widths, which was what a dressy house of that period would have had. And then we uh, we we put them in with. Uh, nails, so forth, which makes it hard to finish them, but it made it period. So I'm kind of crazy. Uh, this is the this is the dining room slash business office of the Simpson House, going back to the original house. And this was the outside door, which could serve also as a coffin door, as they were called, if you're into architecture. But the door that was right over on the right. But we had to move all these bags of stuff out in order to start taking the interior out, and that's the mantle that came out of it that you're going to see in a minute finished up. But that's, that's kind of where we were working from. This is the dining room that we've had in Greensboro. Um, and this corner cupboard is a corner cupboard that was made by John Swicegood, we think around 1820-ish. Uh, and uh, I'll show you stuff that that his that he made also that some of that uh, Mordecai Collins who trained him I'll show you later, but this is the dining room that we had. I grew up with no fireplaces. I always wanted a fireplace, so we had five working fireplaces. I never had more than three going at one time for special events. Obviously, I'm working my you know what off, but it was fun. So I've I've split a lot of wood. Uh, some people went to the gym. I split wood. So so uh, that's what I did. But this is, this is what we had, and 
I miss it. This is a house that was as close to Willow Creek Golf Course, which is just southwest of uh, High Point. And there was a great sale at this house. It was called the Spurgeon Family. And there was a sale August the 3rd, 1983. The temperature got to 103 that day. Uh, it was a crazy sale. The corner cupboard that I showed you came out of that house. I'd known about it for about six years. Uh, I got a little carried away, and so it made the Winston newspaper the next day, but uh, anyhow. <laughs> I still have it, and I enjoyed it, but this was the Spurgeon House. This is a picture taken by a Winston-Salem journal, uh, journalist unbeknownst to us, uh, but that's me and Sarah when we were looking at it just before the sale that day. I'd known about it before, but never seen it, and of course, you know, you have to make big decisions if you're a serious collector on where you're going to go. But then when they wired the house, they wired it and moved, ran the wires up around the corner cover and never moved it. So it, the, the cupboard had never been moved. We think the house was built, <clears throat> excuse me, around 1840-ish, I think, Sally, somewhere in that range. Somewhere in that range. So, but anyhow, that's, that's me and my bride. Okay, back to the dining room because this is a cupboard. So it's... Uh, had a new home and love it, and had the original finials with it, which is very, very important. If you're in the serious collecting, if you if you have the original parts with it, that makes it extremely important and makes some of us go crazy. So, uh, this is a piece in the dining room. This is by John Shaw, Annapolis, Maryland, who's one of the most accomplished uh, cabinet makers in Annapolis, uh, and did the original uh, furniture in the. Uh, uh, the state house in Annapolis originally. So, and this was found by a friend of mine uh, up on Cape Cod, but he knew what he was looking at, and he was a collector, Bob Pearl, for y'all. And, and so he knew he had a sucker in Greensboro that might be interested, so he bought it and brought it back. And that's how we get in trouble. This is a library. This was what was the main parlor before, if you will. Uh, and this is little Millie who ran the show. Uh, we had major antique collector groups there and whatever over the years, and she always demanded either me hold her while I'm talking or either she's going to sit in one of the chairs. But I mean, that's not, she just went right, she knew where to go. She just, we had her 15 years and we miss her. This desk is a signed desk by Mordecai Collins who was the teacher of John Swicegood, who made the corner cover. So, you know, if you get crazy into this stuff, uh, it's crazy. Corner, the blanket chest right there is, is uh, at Randolph County, which is right south of Gifford County, uh, signed 1845, and so forth. So but anyhow, not to bore you with trivia, but that's, that was our, our, our study, and that fireplace got used every night that we were at home. There was halfway excuse to be cold enough to use it. Again, going back to the Simpsons, because it's amazing. He's a very meek looking guy, and he wound up uh, being again in the military. He wound up as a major general in the uh, a militia that he put together before the Civil War, uh, and uh, was a very uh, important person. And But the, most of the limiters were done around Greensboro, but this is 15 miles, 18 miles up in the corner of the county. So, but just as a bit of background. This is that desk that I showed you that was signed by Mordecai Collins. Uh, extremely important desk and so these are the details I won't bore you, but if shrinkage, if wood shrinks, if you're a serious collector, you watch to see if certain boards, wood shrinks across the grain, not long ways, so certain things that were good in 1810 are not good now because of shrinkage. So this is a trivia that you look for if you are a serious collector. Uh, details, I won't bore you with that. Uh, back to this, but it gives you a context of how things uh, are sitting. So we, we had period light, we had light fixtures that were built so that they were appropriate period for the house. And, and so you have to have that if you're gonna go be this crazy. So uh, anyhow, that's what we did. This is our kitchen. Uh, we made the kitchen area where the stove was look like a, a Moravian fireplace. 
And so uh, uh, that's why we did it that way. And, and uh, the table was uh, out of a, a, a Moravian family and was originally in a house on Main Street in Old Salem and was bought at auction. Uh, Selling appreciate this. We knew it was coming up at auction and I'd seen it. I had agreed to work with my church on a construction project because I have this bad habit of wanting to work on construction stuff. And so I, I'd agreed to work and so I said, Sarah, I said, you go to auction and you decide where to buy it or not. And so Sarah bought it, <laughs> so which I'm proud of. But anyhow, we made the kitchen, the whole bit. It's, it's, uh, um, it's, it's, that was our kitchen, which we enjoyed very much. Uh, so. Details, there's a couple of Moravian, rare Moravian pieces of pottery up in the top that if you're into pottery stuff, you pay attention to. This is another view. This is a wall cupboard. It's the earliest known wall cupboard in this group. And Mordecai Collins, the guy that I said was the earliest teacher that made the desk, he made this wall cupboard. So this is, uh, this is again, you hang around this crazy stuff. Floor cloths are something, if you go in our house up here on the hill, uh, uh, y'all, Sarah gets embarrassed with it, but when I first moved here and we said, we first had the first one or two meals here, somebody said, where do you live? And we said, well, we're up in the new part up on the hill. And so he said, you're a, uh, a hillbilly in the outhouse. And so I said, yeah. And so Sarah's been embarrassed to this day about that. Uh, she doesn't th she fails to see the humor of it. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, being, uh, having a few little redneck tendencies, I, I do a fine with it. But so anyhow, but this is uh, our stairway that's a copy, the, the, the stairway part is a copy of the tavern stairway in Old Salem. So, but that's what we did, and that's another, again, close up that I won't bore you with. Again, furniture details, if I'm showing this to a furniture group, they, they want to see details. This is in our parlor. We did not have a mantle for the parlor, uh, and so I was gonna copy one from the John Vogler house about the time we were getting ready to do that, this picker, Howard, uh, Howard, whatever his name was, I forget now, that, who's, who never took care of himself and died years ago, uh, he found this mantle in the north, in the southeast corner of Caswell County, which is within a few miles of, uh, of the Simpson house. And it, we think it was done to the same person because it's got the same reading and all on it that's done, and reading of this type incidentally is more prone to, you see it in southern New Jersey, historic houses than anywhere else, but I know you want to know that, but, but anyhow. Uh, these two chairs, there's, there's four more that go with it that we owned that was part of a set out of Annapolis, Maryland by John Anderson, who was the earliest known cabinet maker in Annapolis. Um, we, I, I eventually, uh, after I retired, took woodworking courses, and I've now made eight exact copies. And this uh, set we just sold uh, in this past year, which is helping me keep Sarah at Pebble Beach. <laughs> but uh, uh, anyhow, and so the painting is uh, one we found up in Connecticut. It's not signed, but a lot of times girls, uh, it's got a book in the hand. A lot of times boys would have dresses. I've got a picture of my daddy at age two-ish with a dress on. Uh, sometimes bo bo girls were boys were dressed more girl-like. I don't think this is, but, but books were put in boys' hands more than girls uh, is a bit of trivia. Uh, some of the silhouettes were done by John Vogler, the mention, person I mentioned who we copied the house from Old Salem. Uh, and the, the, the Pembroke table right there I'll show you in a minute is a very rare model from Baltimore, Maryland. And the table, the box on the top is extremely rare, Moravian box uh, that, but this is a table that has five little bell flowers on it. So if you're into woodworking or, and this was, this table was in this book, Baltimore Furniture, which was a big expedition done in, ex, exhibition done in 1947 of important Baltimore and Annapolis furniture. So if you're into this stuff, it's, it's what you keep up with. Uh, going back to this so you get to see the shape of the rooms and all. This is a close-up silhouette that John Bugler from Old Salem did. He was known for putting that little curl on the bottom, the round curve, 
but he was quite a silhouette maker also. This is a box that is showing the Moravian school in, in uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and is an extremely rare box that came out of the uh, uh, Dr. Veerland's family in Old Salem, who was uh, an incredible physician, circa 1800, incredible physician. Uh, more, more close up. Again, okay, this is a desk and bookcase that came from southern Guilford County, made by a gentleman named John Adams, uh, who was active uh, 17, again, 1785, later moved up into northwest Guilford County, and this, this piece is uh, original feet, the whole bit, if you're in the Sears collecting, that's important. And uh, so this is a piece that we know, and I'll show you in a minute, uh, uh, a diploma that came, it came out of the Neely family, which is a, uh, there's a road named Neely Road down by Pleasant Garden, if you happen to know Guilford County. These two chairs, and there's one more, are, I have a hang up with chairs. I'm known in the woodworking world for being a chairman. Uh, these three, there are three of these, and these were, uh, chairs uh, were made by Charles Belt, uh, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, we think 1760 to 1765. They're incredible chairs if you have the hang up on chairs that I do. And uh, those are three chairs and we, uh, we still have those. But here's the Pleasant Garden High School again, school just south of Greensboro and the Neely. And it was in the, the desk and bookcase. And uh, so we know it was in the family from way back. Again. Back. This clock is from Kentucky. It's got a scribe name inside that was too, is, we've looked it up and it's more of 1860, so we, we know it's one of the owners along the way. We know the clock was made around 1810 uh, and is very important Kentucky clock. And so it, and all of our ceilings were 10 foot ceilings. So, you know, you, you, this is, luckily our house up here is nine foot ceilings because I'm, after you live in 10 foot ceilings, you feel like you're bumping your head if you go into an eight foot ceiling. Uh, this is our, another part of our parlor. This uh, settee was made by one of the Sievers brothers in uh, Old Salem, circa 1830, and was owned by the mining family, which is another one of the families in uh, uh, Old Salem from way back. So, uh, little trivia things that may or may not be interesting. This is an early clock from Guilford County that we think was made somewhere around 1800-ish, and this is in our stairway. And uh, so these are, these are important, these are uh, nine important uh, engravings done uh, by a gentleman, I'm drawing a blank now, and you have to pardon me, I've spent so much time with Sarah that my brain is uh, a blur, but they were, done for the American Sun School Society uh, and were done around uh, 1850 and are done as a, uh, teaching to teach moral examples. And a major uh, dealer, when they were on a tour in our house many years ago, he said that's the first uh, colored set of those he'd ever seen and this is one of the most important uh, uh, paper dealers in the United States. I was patting myself on the back for that one. But, uh, and again, this is a clock in the stairway. They're going up. This is another clock, the Moravian clock that uh, is upstairs that was made by one of the cabinet makers in uh, Old Salem. Uh, again, uh, we like clocks. This is our master bedroom, and this is Millie and Willie. They were brother and sister. Millie got up on the bed right where she is by herself when we get put the camera up, uh, when they set up the camera. I put Willie up there, but Millie was up there already by herself. She just knew right where to be. And this bed is a tiger maple Moravian bed, circa 1830. It's very tall, and as you can tell, and the blanket chest and the desk over there we're gonna talk about in a minute. But, uh, but anyhow, this is the room. This was our master bedroom, the floor as you can see. And uh, it, you had to use a, a ste a steps to get up on the bed, so you didn't want to go jumping off in the sleep. Uh, interestingly, uh, just before we moved, uh, Sarah uh, 
leaped out one night and hit the floor and luckily didn't get hurt. We now think in hindsight this was a, the first sign of her Lewy body dementia that she is, has at this point. Because it's known by the all motion and hand motion. It's the worst kind of dementia. So we think, but she miraculously fell out of this bed on the floor and didn't get hurt. But we think this is the first time. First sign. Now, in hindsight, we didn't know at the time. The, de the blanket chest is the earliest known Moravian blanket chest. It was blown by uh, Johann Frederick Bulacek. He was brought down to Bethania, which is a community right outside of Salem, uh, up north of Old Salem, uh, that uh, to be to build the the grist mill. He was a, a mill. A, 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 he built mills, grist mills. He also uh, built furniture. He also did uh, the organ that was at the Moravian Church in Bethania that burned in 1940. And I would love to meet him because he is just. He had to have incredible skills that just blow me away, and I've many t I'd love to be able to talk to him. But I found this at an auction in 1985 in a family west of Winston that, that had uh, an old Moravian family. So, so it, but it's the earliest known Moravian blanket chest, again, by the bed. Um, the desk on the other side, we're going to see in a minute, came out of the Spurgeon house that I told you where we got the blanket chest. I mean, I mean, the corner cupboard, excuse me. The day we bought the corner cupboard, uh, I bought only the corner cupboard and unfortunately made the newspaper at Winston-Salem Journal the next day for what I'd paid for it. Uh, and, 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 but somebody else had bought that desk and ironically, some years later, uh, I got a call and somebody said, would you be interested in buying this desk? And so, we bought it and brought it back, to, so it's back in the same house. And I'm gonna show you a blanket chest in the next room that came out of the same cell bought by another person, and it came back to us over time. So we felt they were all supposed to be together. But it was out of the Spurgeon family. This is the desk. I mean, it's incredible walnut, incredible wood. We don't know who made it. We think we may know now uh, maybe a, a Last name P E A S E, -S -E Sally. Uh, uh, but but it's it's a maybe maybe June's been working on it, and and so but it was in this house and Wilson Douglas bought it just at the sale and then later came back to us. But we figured it was supposed to be so. Over time we got a contact and said, "Would you be interested in buying this desk?" And I said, "Well, maybe so. I might maybe maybe so maybe so. Anyhow." if you have this bad disease. This shows that you saw that mantle when it was in the room when I showed you to you original. That's what you do if you go to dental school and learn how to clean up things very carefully. You clean teeth and you also clean mantles. So learn, learn a few things. You apply the skills. This painting is, uh, was found in uh, 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 Trinity, which is not far from here if any of you know geography. It was found at a yard at a garage sale in Trinity right after we moved in the house. This is a picture of Trinity College, which was the, which became Duke University. Uh, Trinity was moved to Duke with Duke money circa 1920, 1520s, I think it was, I don't remember. I went to Chapel Hill, so I don't talk about that school much. But uh, uh, that's the other place. But uh, but anyhow. Uh, this is Trinity College, and this is the original frame, and it was found in a garage sale, and, and needless to say, at this point, it's, it's an extremely important painting, and at some point, I may have to find a Duke graduate to talk to him about it, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an extremely important and rare painting, but this was Trinity College before it was Duke. This desk, I mean, this book of uh, chess, is a signed John Swicegood chest. I mentioned the corner cupboard, John Swicegood. Okay, so these are all pieces. Uh, this was in our uh, uh, guest bedroom, one of our guest bedrooms. And uh, so this is, but this is how you look at things. This blanket chest is a blanket chest sold at that Swicegood, a uh, Spurgeon sale in, in 1983. And an individual who ran me on the, blank, on the corner cupboard, 
bought this, and then later, um, some years later, he offered it to me for uh, two-thirds of what he'd paid for it for some miraculous reason. Somebody was looking after us, so, and it's the sign that got the Mordecai Collins signature in it. So we got them all back together. Crazy, crazy. There's the signature. That was the first known signature at the time. Very important. This is a desk, this is a chest that was made by his student, John Swicegood, and there's a signature in it. And this is, in the collecting world, this is a big deal. This is another chest that we know was made by John, uh, John Swicegood and has a little different front on it. Original braces, doesn't have a signature, but I stumbled onto it and need to have it. I figured we needed it at one point, so. This is a, the um, um, story in uh, Old Salem that y'all, if you've been to Old Salem, uh, you've seen it, and, and uh, the Baggy store, which was, in my opinion, the most important store in this part of North Carolina, circa 18th century, early 19th century. Uh, John Swicegood, we have a record of him buying Bryce's through the Baggy store early 1820s to put on his hardware. So, but Baggy was a European uh, and, and quite an interesting individual, but this is a Baggy store in Old Salem, incidentally, is opening back up now. And so we got, you know, wiped out during COVID, but it's opening back up now. Opened 10 to 2, Sally, didn't it? Yeah. And, when, and hopefully we'll be more later, but that's a baggy story. These are some Guilford Limners that were of the Hanner family, which is a family that lived east of Greensboro in about an 800 acre plantation. And these were given to the Greensboro Museum by the last uh, direct descendant who had never married, and they were given to the Greensboro Museum. And um, my buddy Gene lived two doors from this individual and was his legal guardian. And Gene's daddy was a professor at Guilford College and he was involved with Guilford College and Gene has worked with in very important ways. So Gene, uh, uh, when these, these were given to the Greensboro Museum and the, uh, I'm gonna show you a sample later Wait a minute, let me get, well, there it is, but we'll go back in just a minute. Uh, back. The sampler was done by this little girl right here, Caroline. I'm going to show you in a minute. But anyhow, uh, Gene asked me to go down to check on a crack in the, the roof, the, the dining room of the house two doors from here one day. And I walk in and I see uh, copies of these all put together, which Greensboro Museum had made copies of them and put it in a frame. And I go in and I about go crazy. And I see this little chest sitting there, and I'm going to show you in a minute, sitting in the entrance hall, and I fell on my knees. <laughs> Not that I'm praying, but I fell on my knees. And, and went crazy again. And it's like, oh my gosh. And so, but this was an extremely important family of Guilford County area, circa. Uh, 18th and 19th century with the Hanner family. And this is a sampler that was wadded up in a bunch of stuff at the sale, just laying in the pile. And so once I saw that, I stood by it till it was auctioned off so somebody wouldn't put it in their pocket. But I since had it restored and properly mounted uh, by a friend of ours in Williamsburg. Uh, but this, she did that sampler, uh, 1830, 1820, I forget now, pardon me, my brain's not working good, but it's, it's anyhow. These were some items that came out of the family. So these were pretty fancy items of, you know, early 19th century and some books. But those items were at the sale and I just picked them up and bid on them. This is a little girl that did the sampler. This little chest was in the entrance hall and this is what I fell on my knees for. Because I, 
I, I couldn't believe it. And uh, so it, it's a, a miniature chest, but it's, it's on the, never had braces put on it, which is not totally unusual for some early pieces. And it's built in a, what's called a, a, a style that's more of around Salisbury, North Carolina. And, and uh, turns out some of the Hannahs, one of the Hannahs married somebody from Salisbury circa 1820, and we think this is circa 1820, so things start to come together sometimes. And so, and then the piece on the right was, was, uh, is an incredible piece that was done by an incredible, really famous cabinet maker in uh, Baltimore. And uh, again, I'm drawing, pardon me, I've spent so much time with Sarah, my brain, I'm forgetting the name now, but incredible sewing cabinet, top of the line sewing cabinet that's very important. And, but I'm on my knees behind this just to give you a perspective of the size of it. It's a miniature and is in our dining room up, up in our outhouse. So, so uh, but that gives you an idea. This is the back wing of our house in Greensboro. We built the back wing to look like an 18th century Raven house, and then we put an early 19th century front on it, which is what a lot of people did by that period. So we did, that's what we did. Uh, to make it, we did it all at one time, but uh, but that's what we did. So, and then a little outbuilding that I copied and all that, but this is this is what we did. My shop, which I <laughs> built as an 18th century, had a fireplace in it, but once I started doing woodwork and I couldn't really have a fireplace, too big a risk of explosion, but these are some of the chairs I was building, but this is, this is where I spent my more time once I retired. I, I wasn't in there as much before I retired, but this is, and I would love to get back to it. I have pretty much devoted all my time for Sarah since we moved here. This is our house in the snow. This is our house in Old Salem. It's a historic house called the Vega House. It's on the square. And we had hoped to uh, have small groups come over and do tours as we've done before uh, from our church and museum groups and all that. Uh, COVID and Sarah's situation, obviously that hadn't been, but uh, it's, it's something we were asked to buy because they knew I was a sucker. Uh, and uh, we bought it soon to be 12, 12 years ago. And uh, I've, I think I'm gonna keep it and, and uh, hopefully do more tours. Somebody, sadly somebody's interested in buying it, but I told them I'm not gonna do anything with it right now. But because but, uh, we, uh, we used to do small group tours where we come in and maybe have some little cookies and Kool-Aid and and give an overview of this. This was a 17, uh, 1787 uh, original, as it was originally built. The addition on it was for the physician that built it. That, that addition was built in 1819. And it was a Dr. Beerling who built a house down the street later that a good friend of ours, and our, who's our accountant, uh, lives in. And, but this is an incredible house that uh, uh, and we've enjoyed doing customized tours from there. And I think I know somebody named Sally Gant that could probably help us do some customized tours in Mazda that would blow your mind. Uh, so if, I'm, if we can work that out in due time, this is what I'm hoping for. So, but anyhow, this is how I've been wasting my time. So thank you. <laughs>